Welcome to this tutorial on GHS scripting. Tutorial number 850 focuses on templates, or what you might commonly think of as custom user forms. So today we're going to cover the template command in GHS, and the template command basically creates custom user forms. So then we're going to expand on that on how to uh, put form items within that template. Things like buttons, fields, uh, maybe even radio buttons. And then we're also going to talk about how to use the uh, buttons to also exit the form. But first a disclaimer. This presentation is for instruction purposes only. It is not to be used in engineering for construction. And I am not a representative of creative systems. Uh, this is unofficial training only based upon my own experience. For the official training, you can contact creative systems, the information in the bottom of your screen. I highly recommend it. It's very informative. Okay, so custom user forms. That's what we're doing today with the GHS template command. Uh, and custom user forms, you know, this is letting you create your own custom windows. Buttons, text fields, radio buttons. I mean, you're into ultra-level expert for GHS development right now. Uh, at this point, you're pretty much on par with the developers in terms of uh, functionality. Uh, the way they work is basically like macros. So everything we've done up until now, you've been pretty much working through text interface. Well, now you're going to be creating your own custom windows. So you're really up to the point where you're creating a full self-contained GHS run file that gets um, used by other people. And you're essentially creating everything, including the interface with that run file. So the template command is how you do all of this. And you'll notice it looks a lot like a macro command. It works pretty much the same way. So you have to start by first declaring it and defining it. That's the first thing you have to do in a template command. And it's uh, the command is template, a name, comma, and then a title in quotation marks. Uh, the name is the name of your template, just like a macro name. Uh, this has eight characters max. And then the title is the title that will show up in your window toolbar when this template first pops up. Now after you define it, you still have to execute it, just like a macro. So you use dot name, whatever the name of your template is, with a dot in front of it, and that will start it up. Now we have to take our field, our template, and fill it up with fields. Uh, fields are things like text boxes, radio buttons, control buttons, anything that lets the user interact with the program. And these are the things that go inside that window. Now, how do you actually put them inside the window? Well, the layout is uh, basically a grid system, and GHS picks the grid based upon how your code is laid out inside the template command. So each new line of code is a new line in the window. And if you want to put multiple fields on one line, then in your code what you're going to do is put them both there and separate them with a vertical bar which is GHS's way of combining multiple commands into a single line. Now, in general, here's the syntax for a field definition. Uh, you start off with a label, and the label is whatever is going to show up, that name that will show up in the field. Uh, you can also use a colon and add on a value. Uh, the reason you might do that is because the label might be something, and then you might have a value that is what GHS uses. The GHS is the value is the output that goes into GHS from that label, and it might be something completely different. So the label is the publicly visible text, and the value is the internal result from the user picking that text. Now, a couple other things. Uh, type specifies the uh, type of field that you've got. Uh, and then name and parameter, those are field-specific options, and we'll get into that later. And then finally, you have the exit keyword. Now notice that came first in the middle. Uh, the exit keyword is a command optional. Uh, it's sent to GHS as part of the definition that tells GHS to close the window after your command completes. You don't have to put that in. And also the, the uh, three periods there, that dot, dot, dot in the middle, that's not part of the command at all. Don't ever include that. Okay, so now 
let's show you some of these common fields that you can have fun with. The first and simplest is a simple text field. To do a text field, no fancy commands or anything, you just take type text in and you put it in uh, quotation marks. You can also use this as a trick to create blank lines in your field. So what you would do is you would put one white space in quotation marks and that will create a blank line. I mean, actually, it will create a line with a single space on it, which happens to be invisible. Okay, now the other common input is a variable input. Uh, this is going to let the user enter some value into a text box, and that value will be assigned to a variable. Now the variable is something that you have already created. And you start off with specifying a label, uh, and then you can optionally add in the value for that label. Keyword variable, that's the uh, keyword that you have to use. And then the variable name. Now the variable name is the name of the GHS variable that is going to receive the value that the user is entering. Now you can also expand this variable input thing and create a different type of form. Uh, if you put multiple label statements in front of that variable keyword, then they are going to combine together to create a single drop-down box. So that lets the user pick from your drop-down box what sort of inputs you want created or entered in for this variable value. Another useful form item is a parts input. This is, it lets you actually select different parts from the model definition. So it creates another drop-down list, but GHS automatically populates that list uh, with items that are listed in the parts command or in the tanks command. So if the parts or tanks command are not option are not active, uh, those are what you would use to create a reduce list. If they're not active, GHS will just show all of the parts. Uh, how would you use that? Well, the GHS command is label space the keyword parts and then variable name. A label is going to be the name that shows up on the form. So it's not actually in the form. It's not part of your part selection or anything. Uh, it's just a name that shows up in the form as part of the uh, the label for this parts command. And then the variable name is the name of a GHS variable to receive the values of the selected parts. Now, you're able to select parts and enter values, but it doesn't do you any good unless you can do something with that. So you need an execute button. Uh, the execute button, it executes a GHS macro. Uh, you can also set that up to close a template when done. So the way this works is you have label. Uh, label is the, the uh, label that goes on your button name. The keyword exit, that's optional. And then period and the name of your GHS macro. So if you just wanted a button that executes a GHS macro, you would type the label that you want in your button inside quotation marks, space, and then dot whatever macro name you want to execute. The, uh, the exit statement, that's optional. And that will close the template afterwards, after you click the button. Now, I wanted to mention that there are several other fields that you can pick from. There are radio buttons, there are checkboxes, there are even file reader buttons. So read up on all of those if you are interested in using them. I would say just check the reference manual, look under the template command. There are lots and lots and lots, literally pages of information on how to use templates in the reference manual. Okay, so next thing I and last thing I wanted to show you was how to close templates. Uh, so you, you've got your window that pops up. You probably also want to be able to close the window. So you have the GHS command of OK, Cancel, Exit, and then Name. So what that does is that creates two buttons that show up, the OK button and the Cancel button. And then you have Exit. That closes the template. So that will happen 
regardless of whether you click OK or cancel. But then we also have this optional part afterwards, this dot name, uh, where the name is the, that's the name of a GHS macro or sub template. Uh, that one will only execute when you click the OK button. Uh, by default, every time you create a template, this is also created. So it, it automatically happens normally. Okay, time to practice some of these skills. So homework number 851, I would like you to create a user form that allows the user to load a set of tanks and do a few things with them. And by load, I mean um, put liquid inside them. So you're going to need to create several user forms to do this. Uh, a form item for a tank selector, number one. Uh, and then a variable input field to specify the tank load level as a percentage or as a fraction. Be clear you specify which one. Then you're going to actually have a button to apply the load. Because remember when you type in the load level you haven't done anything yet. You've just sent a value to a variable. So the button will actually apply that load. And then another button that will show condition graphics of the load. And then finally an exit button to close the form. Now that exit button should set up so that when you click the OK to exit, it should equalize the vessel and display the vessel status as well as closing the form. So make sure you use status GHS. Okay, well thank you very much for watching. I hope you have found this educational and informative. You can find the homework files along with their solutions and other tutorials at dmsonline.us. Thanks very much.